Chucky. Wanna play? <laughs> I'm your host, Scary Pops, and everybody loves a good scare, so let's get into it. It was a calm night throughout the graveyard, and Carl, the gravedigger, heard a bell ring. And sometimes it's the wind, or sometimes it's just children pretending to be spirits. But this time it wasn't neither. Carl heard a voice coming from below, pleading to be unburied. Carl then asked, are you Sarah O'Bannon? The voice says, Yes. You were born on September 17th, 1827. Yes. The gravestone says you died February 19th. No, no, I'm alive. It was a mistake. Dig me out. Set me free. Sorry about this, ma'am. As Carl stepped on the bell to silence it, and as he continued to throw on dirt, this is August, and whatever it is you are down there, you're not alive, and I'm not letting you out, no way. No! And then she screamed. It was summer and my family went on a vacation to Cape Cod and we rented a small older home to stay in for about two weeks. The bedrooms were on the second floor and the kitchen and living room were the, on the main floor and downstairs there was a basement room. On the first night we were there, we were awakened by a terrible scream coming from my sister's room. My dad would burst into her room and turn on the light. She was sitting up screaming and crying. My parents then calmed her down and asked her what was wrong. She said she was awakened by a horrible stench. When she opened her eyes, the entire room was soaked in blood, top to bottom, blood everywhere, and blood handprints, and blood splatter dropping from the ceiling. My parents told her, it was just a bad dream. But no, she refused. She refused to go back into the room and she slept in my parents' room. Then the next night, my mom was cooking in the kitchen and my dad went out to go run an errand. And my sister and I were in the basement room. We were just watching TV. Just then, the light bulb popped and the TV went out, leaving us in complete darkness. We froze, not knowing what to do. Then we started to smell a horrible stench. It made us nauseous. It smelled like rotting flesh. Now we could hear scratching in the darkness. We were scared and we scrambled in the dark room trying to find the door. And as we located it, we ran to find our mother. And we told her about what happened and the smell and the scratching noise. My mom said that she would go down there, replace the bulb and check out the room but mom mom don't worry guys i'll go down there and take care of it so my mom took a bulb and a flashlight and descended into the dark downstairs and we waited at the top of the stairs but it seemed to be an eternity of a wait she then all of a sudden ran upstairs and slammed the door and bolted it as fast as she could she looked at us with a face completely drained of color and said i don't want you going down there again she went into the kitchen and called the police. We overheard her talking that she determined she saw someone in the room. We waited for the police and stared at the door, expecting it to get broken down. 
Mom wouldn't tell us what she saw, but then we heard a knock at the door. The police arrived. My mom took them to the basement and unlocked the door. They went down and searched the entire basement, but they found nothing. But there's no windows. There's no other door. There's no way out of the basement. When the police left, my mom revealed what struck her with fright. She was changing the light bulb and started to smell a stench and heard the scratching and shine the flashlight in between the washer and dryer. Something was crouched. It was a man. It was tattered. Hair was wild and he didn't look human. Her light shined into his eyes and he vanished in the wall. My mom packed our bags and as soon as my dad arrived, we left, never to return. Around that time, my dad got a new job that required us to move. Not a small move. It was a good nine hours away from the house I grew up in. We hired a moving truck, but we still had the task of getting our car down to the new house. And this time of year also happened to be around the time I was learning to drive. I guess my dad thought nine hours on the highway would be good practice for me. So the plan was me and my dad would drive the car down to the new house, while my mom and my sisters would fly. I wasn't exactly looking forward to the drive. Not because of the time, I didn't really mind that part. I was more so worried about the blizzard my phone was showing we would hit halfway into our trip. Driving in the snow as a new driver is not something I really ever wanted to experience. My dad dismissed this though, telling me it wasn't that bad, and for the most part would just feel the same as normal driving. Anyway, we left at around 3pm, so we were sent to get to the new house at around midnight. Come around 8pm, and yeah, we got hit by the blizzard. It was a lot more extreme than I had imagined it would be. Although, my dad must have trusted my inexperienced driving for whatever reason, as he never once said anything about him wanting to take over the wheel. So, I kept going. Eventually, my nightmare would come true. I lost control of the car, and we were sent sliding off the road and towards a line of trees. In the moment, I tried my best to avoid them, but the car slightly grazed one of them. Luckily, I don't think my dad was that mad. It's not like we hit a tree head on at full speed. We got out to assess the damage, and by some miracle, there was nothing but a slight scratch on the back passenger side door. I held back a laugh of genuine relief. Just then, I noticed a vehicle coming up the road with some extremely bright high beams on. As it got closer, it started honking, and continued doing so until it pulled up right next to us. The guy rolled down his window. I figured he was going to ask us if we needed help. But no, he looked at us and began some awkward small talk, completely ignoring the situation we were currently in. My dad just kind of looked at the dude and told him we didn't have time to talk and asked what he needed. The guy responded with something like, Oh, uh, I just noticed you dropped something about a mile back. I think it fell into your trunk. Now, we did have a few things in our trunk that we didn't send with the moving truck, but there was no way any of it could have fallen out, or at least I thought. I looked at my dad and asked him if there was any way something could have fallen out. My dad started his response, but was interrupted by the man saying, Well, you must have, because I was right behind you. It's in my back seat here. Why don't you go ahead and get it so I can get out of here? I figured it couldn't hurt to look, just in case we actually had dropped something somehow. But right as I put my hand on the guy's backseat door handle, my dad abruptly yelled at me saying that we didn't lose anything and to get back in our car immediately. A few seconds of silence with my hand still on the door handle went by. Yelling was completely out of character for my dad, though I eventually listened to him and got back in our car. We drove off, with not another word being said by either us or the guy. I couldn't help but notice the extremely disturbing and almost angry face of the driver as we drove past him. Once we got a few miles down the road, my dad would apologize for yelling at me. I of course told him it was fine, just that I wasn't really expecting it. I will never forget what he said next. He said he felt like he had to, because while I was heading towards the guy's back door, through the window he could just barely make out the silhouettes of two men waiting on the other side. He would further explain that by the looks of their movements as I was walking towards the door, upon opening the door I would either be attacked, kidnapped, or worse. Hearing this was a complete shock to me. 
but to this day, I'm still glad my dad told me what he saw. It taught me at a young age that not everyone has the best intentions in this world. However, at the end of the day, we can't 100% confirm the guy had bad intentions. But I myself truly believe my dad's instincts were correct. The whole situation just didn't add up. Why would there have been two men waiting right at the door for me to open it? And on top of that, when we got to our new house, we were able to verify that nothing was missing from our trunk. Thinking about this whole experience still scares me, even today.